Hello, this is Telecom TV. We are at the Wireless Global Congress here in London, very close by Heathrow, and I'm talking with Thiago Rodriguez, who is General Manager of the Wireless Broadband Alliance. Thiago, nice to see you again. Um, and we had a telephone conversation not that long ago. Glad to see you here in person. Let's begin with an update on the WBA activities. In the past, not too far in the past, but moderately recently, now and what you're looking forward to doing over the next year, 18 months? Yeah, first of all, thank you, Martin, and well, welcome well. to the Wireless Global Congress. Thank you. A pleasure to have you here and, and of course, Telecom TV as well. Um, we have having exciting times in the, in the Alliance. Who, the membership have really driving outstanding work in terms of how Wi-Fi is evolving and becoming more carried grade type of technology addressing more and more um, the deployment of services and the way that those services can somehow address the consumer needs or the enterprise needs or even the city needs or the different market segments. Uh, we even recently deployed uh, a work stream on in-home Wi-Fi. So it's a completely new stream of work in the Alliance. We have been for many years focusing on carrier Wi-Fi and public hotspots, but now we are starting entering into the home environment as well. Uh, we see a lot of opportunities for collaboration between Wi-Fi and the cellular industry. We have many of the biggest mobile carriers within the WBI membership. We have been trying to drive that uh, experience of Wi-Fi and cellular coming together and somehow combining the best of the two worlds to make us, all of us as consumers, having a much better experience. That's where you're going to go. Presumably for that, Diego, you have a roadmap. Um, how far along you, it are you? And what lumps and bumps in the roads have you found along the way? Yeah. Have there been challenges and concerns? Yeah, definitely. There's been a, several challenges along the way. I think we, as an organization, we were founded and we have been pursuing this idea of we need to bring to the Wi-Fi industry the same experience that all of us we have on the cellular. So I can go anywhere in the world, I can pick up my phone, I can switch on and I'm connected, I can call my family, can have access to my data. So we need to bring that automatically and secure experience to the Wi-Fi. So we have been working on that. We have our what we call next generation hotspot program with uh, based on the passpoint technology we have been doing a substantial amount of work in terms of interoperability of networks not only between uh, operators and service providers but we have even projects for interoperability and roaming between wi-fi of cities wi-fi in enterprises we did for example this year a massive project together with GSMI and the city of Barcelona. So we combined the city infrastructure together with the convention center, the airport, the train stations. We took all the operators as well, combining uh, with all these properties and venues. And somehow we try to replicate what could be the vision uh, for this seamless Wi-Fi experience that I get to the airport, I get out of the plane, I switch on my phone, I get connected to a Wi-Fi, I get into the taxi, I don't have coverage, so I use the cellular technology. But then when I go to a restaurant or a coffee shop or a convention center or in one hotel, I'm again connected to the Wi-Fi. So that idea of having uh, always this permanent connection, either between Wi-Fi and cellular, it's something that we have been pursuing. It has not been easy, but uh, uh, along the way, we have been trying to collaborate not only with other industry bodies, but collaborate with the right stakeholders, either regulators and policy makers, either with the cities or uh, the property owners, like hotels like this one that we are, and of course, the operators and service providers. People have said to me, uh, over a while actually, that, that, that Wi-Fi is the Cinderella of the transform network. In other words, they're saying, you know, it's not really ignored, but it's not in the position of prominence it ought to be for various reasons. And now we find we have this new Wi-Fi 6, which you mentioned previously coming out. Well, at least people understand what Wi-Fi 6 is, so they understand what 6 is and 5 is and so on. But, you know, the, the 802AX uh, 
etc., which is much more techy to anybody who doesn't understand what it's about. Um, what is Wi-Fi 6? Why is it a step change for the industry? And will it change the fortunes of Wi-Fi, which many observers think will be in decline when 5G arrives? Very, very interesting questions, Martin. Thank you for that. So first of all, start with the basic. Wi-Fi 6 is the evolution of the technology called Wi-Fi. So it's one more wave of a new standard that will somehow push the technology forward. It brings, we have been used that in the past, the technologies, we always look for the speed as the main evolution. I think Wi-Fi 6 evolution is not about speed. It's more, to, more about management capacities and an intelligent way to manage all the devices that are connected to the Wi-Fi networks. So one of the big advantages of Wi-Fi 6 is the ability to manage the traffic that those devices are generating and somehow uh, schedule the way that the message go out to the internet. So that is a massive uh, improvement that in fact is already done in the cellular networks but now it's now becoming available uh, on the Wi-Fi with Wi-Fi 6. And this is going to help drastically uh, service providers, but as well cities and enterprise venues where there is a massive demand for traffic. Can be a stadium, can be a convention center, can be a train station, an airport, where we have a high demand of users and devices to be connected. We in WBI, we have been pushing a work of, first of all, educating our members first, but as well the industry in general, of those benefits. We believe that uh, the traditional operators and service providers will have a strong benefit on evolving their networks to Wi-Fi 6. And if we start to combine Wi-Fi 6 with other technologies like NGH and Passpoint, where you get automatically and secure way connected to the networks, we start to bring to the Wi-Fi a very similar experience as we have on the cellular. So this brings uh, huge opportunities, and now I will jump to your second part <laughs> of, of the question, yeah. that this will bring huge opportunities for the service providers almost to have a portfolio of options that depending on the type of services, the location, if it's outdoor, if it's indoor, the number of devices and users that is expected to be connected on a specific location. So they have a portfolio of options that they can play depending on the conditions of that coverage. So if it's to cover the countryside of UK, maybe I don't need to put Wi-Fi, so maybe I can deploy 5G. But if I'm in the center of London or I'm in Wembley Stadium, I know that I will have 60 or 70,000 people coming, probably each person with two or three devices, I really need to have the capability to address properly the connectivity to all those customers. Right. And Wi-Fi can play alongside wi with 5G and can be a really good marriage of one unlicensed technology with the licensed technology. And just to, to share one last comment, for all of us that have been on this industry for many years, that same question always come when someone says, oh, 3G, 3G will now come and kill Wi-Fi, and didn't happen. So we all, as consumers, we just consume more. Then LTE 4G was another, oh, this is the, the time that Wi-Fi will disappear. The opposite. Nowadays, we have more and more consumption, all of us. And I believe it's going to happen the same in, in 5G era. So ourselves as, as, as consumers and the industry that is behind uh, the way that we utilize connectivity and the internet is going to evolve as well. So as more capacity we have, more innovative services, new ways of consuming the internet and consume data will come up and new very creative options and solutions will come and I'm pretty sure that we'll have uh, 6G networks and probably Wi-Fi 7 and this trend will continue in the future. Well, let's get let's get Wi-Fi 6 done first. <laughs> and while we're staying on that, uh, Tiago, um, we've, we've, we've sort of 
All right, we accept that Wi-Fi isn't going to die the death. It's always yes. going to be there in some form, perhaps not in the way people appreciate it now, but it's going to be there in some form within, within the framework of a 5G network, transform network. What will the role or roles of Wi-Fi be? Are we talking about backhaul? Are we talking about what part will Wi-Fi play in a 5G network? That's, that's uh, another really good question. Wi-Fi as a technology has a, a, a huge benefit that is backwards compatibility. So I can have a Wi-Fi 6 device and it's going to work with a Wi-Fi 3 or Wi-Fi 2 or Wi-Fi 4 network. Yeah. And this is something that uh, has not been replicated by the cellular world because it's a much more complex ecosystem. Uh, and this gives a huge advantage uh, for the Wi-Fi evolution. So we don't need to change the entire um, infrastructure and the entire ecosystem of Wi-Fi every time that we have a new standard. So we can maintain some devices and involve in another one. So that has been giving Wi-Fi a huge uh, success formula, special in um, use cases where we may have a um, life, lifetime of 10 years, 15 years, 12 years of certain type of services that need to be deployed not with a, a, a short-term vision but really in very long-term uh, perspectives and that has definitely is, is, is a significant advantage. Good stuff, very very interesting. Thiago Rodriguez, thank you very much. Thank you, Martin.